welcome back to MTD CNC. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm with my buddy Michael and we're at Water Saver, a 70 year old company, third generation company, and we're gonna talk about NAC, the investment in MAC with six machines that they have here, plus the new addition of the bar feed. So Michael, thank you so much for being a part of MTD, my friend. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about the Nakamura, the reasons for investment. Let's talk about the reasons for the original investments and then the addition of this new one and the bar feed. What has it sure. done for you? Uh, really, the biggest thing it's done is it's uh, reduced our cycle time. It's allowed us to bring in parts that we uh, couldn't machine complete in one operation. Um, with the addition of two turrets, we were able to add more tooling, um, run jobs complete, uh, and run jobs continuously uh, through two shifts, uh, and sometimes unattended overnight. Traditionally, you had, at least previously, been running with about 12 tools, and this one offers you 24? Correct, yes. So with the addition of the uh, lower turret, we're able to uh, not only put more tools in, but split operations. Uh, we're also able to run two turrets on a single spindle, uh, reducing cycle time, uh, and also running uh, two parts simultaneously. You've mentioned reducing cycle times a couple of times now, which is important, yes. I think, to understand. It's important to convey to the audience, right? Absolutely. When we're talking about reduction, is it 50%, 60%? Where have you seen this benefit? Uh, so our original goal was a 50% uh, reduction in cycle time. You know, in theory, you have two spindles and two turrets, so you're able to machine two parts at once. Um, depending on the part geometry uh, and how uh, the machining takes place, uh, we've seen up to 60-70% reduction uh, by utilizing uh, both turrets on a single spindle, uh, increased uh, um, improved tooling, um, and uh, really digging down into the details of how each part is programmed and making sure that it's programmed in the most efficient manner possible. That's a great answer. We've also mentioned a couple of times trying to do more on one machine instead of moving sure. things around to remove the operator potential error. We all try to do as much as we can inside of a single machine without moving things around. Yep. Has that, that's been a pretty big benefit for you as well? Absolutely, yeah. With the addition, uh, the WT, the upper turret has a Y axis, so a lot of operations that we weren't able to do on our uh, single turret lathes, we can now do in this machine. Uh, also with the addition of uh, specialty live tooling, uh, we are now able to drill and tap parts uh, at different angles um, that we weren't able to do on other machines. Um, and then also just bringing in new uh, tooling, investing in new uh, tooling to reduce cycle time and to increase the productivity. You had mentioned to me that oftentimes you'll do your own products from beginning to end, but oftentimes as well, a customer will send you a partially done piece, right? And you sure. would previously have to put it on one machine, then another machine, just based on the component dimensions and yep. size. Now you're utilizing a single machine, so we don't have to bounce around quite as much. That's part of that, that process of getting things done faster, not just with cycle time, but overall time, right? Absolutely, yeah, two different things. Uh, one is that uh, we had parts where we had, there were simply too many features. Uh, with the 12 station uh, lathe, we just were not able to uh, machine all of the features in a single setup. Uh, so those uh, parts would need to be moved to either a second lathe or a machining center, um, as well as we purchased partially machined components from suppliers where we may need to add a waterway or drill and tap a hole for a set screw um, that oftentimes we would be done on a manual mill or even a manual lathe um, with a person standing in front of a machine uh, making one part at a time. Uh, now with the combination of the two turrets as well as the 12 foot bar feeder, uh, we're able to bring those parts in house, uh, machine them complete from bar stock um, and all in one shot. Well, Michael, something I think that's really cool about this facility and people out there watching right now, I invite you, if Michael allows you to come in to take a tour of this incredible facility, is that you're in downtown Chicago and staying here for everyone, the employees, the owner lives a couple miles away. But knowing that you're in downtown Chicago, knowing that you're catering to a group of people who live somewhat locally, you've yeah. invested in automation all over. And I know this is a long segue, but we're on bar feed. And bar yeah. feed might be the simplest way, most cost effective way to get into automation, but I see it everywhere. Yeah. Can we talk about the reasons why you went for the bar feed on this Nakamura machine? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, we buy bars from our mill. They come in in 12 foot sections uh, on our uh, traditional single turret lathes. We're taking those 12 foot bars, cutting them up into three foot sections for short feed bar feeders. Um, what we wanted to do here is bring bars in from the mill, put them in the machine and run them complete. Um, it reduces the amount of remnant that we have. It also uh, increases the uptime uh, on the machine so that the machine is running more. 
Uh, with the FMB bar feeders, uh, we're able to consistently load uh, new bars uh, where the machine gets turned on in the morning and runs all day. Yeah, and we like that unmanned operation because I'm looking around and you have a lot of turning machines here, but I don't see people standing at all of them. So you're figuring this part of the uh, automation out, right? Absolutely, yeah. And that's one of the things um, as we've invested in automation, uh, you know, our owner has asked us uh, what we can do to automate lathes and we tell them a bar feeder. Um, it's not the coolest or most sexy uh, application uh, for automation, uh, but it's the most efficient way to, to run lathes on man. It looks pretty cool and sexy to me, I'm not gonna lie. But, so we're working directly with the methods team here when we're talking Nakamura's and we'll talk robo drills as well, but we're working directly with methods. What's that relationship been like and what's the service been like through methods? Uh, it's been excellent start to finish. Um, you know, the, the day that the machine is on our floor, uh, they have a tech here ready to level it, um, working us through any uh, issues that we have. Um, there's always someone available uh, with a quick question. Um, you know, a lot of times we have a question, we, get it, we send them an email, uh, their response within an hour to um, get us back up and running. Um, they've also been a great partner uh, with Edge Technologies and with FMB um, to support us on anything that uh, requires that we need for the bar feeder. Um, yeah, top-notch support all around. Zach's a pretty okay guy. I mean, we are recording this, so we'll be held to our word at this point. Yes. But you also just received a Nakamura in January, so it must be going pretty well, right? It is, absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much for sharing this story. I know this is going to benefit the audience who's interested in learning more about Nakamura. Great Japanese machine. Michael, you're incredible. Thank you so much for thank that. Thank you.